Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Topic UFO. Tonight we're going to be speaking about a subject that I didn't even know existed, to be uh, honest with you. Um, after almost two years of doing this show, I thought I'd pretty much uh, heard from every theory, thought, possibility uh, about UFOs that, that's out there. Uh, but I was proven wrong. Uh, a few days ago, I received an email uh, from the author of a new book entitled UFOs and the Nation of Islam. And uh, reading the, the outline of the book, um, I just had to have him on. Uh, the author's name is Rashad, Rashad Muhammad, and he's going to be with us tonight uh, to talk about his new book, UFOs and the Nation of Islam. Uh, before we get to Rashad, I want to give a quick shout out uh, for the Mysteries of Space and Sky X. Uh, it's going to be in Gambrills, Maryland, coming up on October 26th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, there's going to be uh, quite a few different speakers. Uh, two of our past guests are going to be there, uh, Norm Gagnon and uh, John Ventry. Um, also, Dr. J David Jacobs and Colonel Thomas McCabe, along with, with others. So again, that's the Mysteries of Space and Sky X coming up October 26, which is a Saturday in Gambrills, Maryland. So if you're interested, check that out. All right, let's get on with the show, shall we? Uh, our guest name is Rashad Muhammad. He has a new book out that was just uh, released on September 17th of 2013, entitled UFOs and the Nation of Islam, The Source, Proof, and reality of the wheels. Rashad, are you out there? Hi, Rick. I am. I am. Rashad, thanks so much for, for joining us tonight and coming to talk to us about your new book. Um, as I was telling the, the, uh, the viewers, um, I thought I had heard all the different theories uh, over the past two years. Nowhere did I ever hear of a connection between UFOs and the Nation of Islam. Is that a common uh, reaction you get when you talk to people in uh, the world of ufology? Uh, that would depend on the circles that you're in. Uh, there's a broad demographic in America and in the world, for that matter, who are very familiar with the uh, teachings and the uh, claims put forth by the Nation of Islam and its leadership. So it, it, for the most part, depends on what circles you run into. Uh, this has been an integral part of the Nation of Islam uh, theology and teaching since its inception in the, uh, in the, since 1930. So <clears throat> that goes back uh, about 15 years before Roswell, even. That's correct. So what can you tell us? Um, obviously, the, the title, UFOs and the Nation of Islam, the source, proof, and reality of the wheels. Uh, what can you give us as far as, as proof? Excellent. Before I get into that, Rick, I okay. first first want to thank you um, for having me, uh, for giving us a platform to share with you and your listeners this most interesting subject. Um, in regard to what you mentioned at first, um, the viewpoint of the Nation of Islam on UFOs has, in my judgment, been deliberately left out of many, um, of course, the media, has been left out of... Uh, many uh, academic discussions, and even ufological discussions surrounding this topic. And it is my judgment that this is done deliberately because um, I don't think that serious UFO researchers can 
um, do so much research on this subject and overlook uh, a group, a phenomenal group that's right under their noses that's been here since 1930. <laughs> so I believe to also answer what you mentioned earlier, I think that part of uh, what's taking place is that the viewpoint has been uh, deliberately excluded. Um, and 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 the reason for that is just because of the Islamic connection? Is that your, your feeling it, there? It, it runs much deeper than that, because to know the viewpoint of the Nation of Islam, uh, starting back in the early 1930s, uh, the Nation of Islam is known for very bold and audacious claims. Uh, perhaps the most prolific and, and bold claim uh, stems from the fact that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, he made the bold claim that he was taught directly by the Supreme Being who came in person in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and this God in person literally showed him, summoned and showed him the reality of these wheels that have now become known as UFOs and flying saucers. Elijah Muhammad was given the intricate details concerning these crafts, um, their purposes, who pilots them, where they were made, what they can do, and, and all of that. And this, he says, was shown to him and illustrated to him by God in person. That perhaps is even more perplexing than the fact that the Nation of Islam uh, teaches about these UFOs. But the root of it has to do with the fact that Elijah Muhammad claims that his God, the Supreme Being, literally showed him these crafts and and promised him that he would be guided by and backed by these uh, wheel-shaped crafts. <laughs> now, so the, the, the leader uh -huh. said God, God came down or whatever and, and told him about these these UFOs, and uh, I'm assuming the extraterrestrials inside them, or <laughs> is there no connection between the physical UFO and some type of extraterrestrial? <laughs> I'm so glad that you asked that, Rick. What was given to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and be mindful that this, as you stated earlier, is before any mass sightings, before any uh, major UFO investigation. This is even before the term UFO became a part of uh, the language, a part of the vernacular. Right. Um, of course, this is before the Kenneth Arnold uh, sighting. But the Nation of Islam had already been proclaiming these things, um, which literally caused the authorities in the United States to label the Nation of Islam a voodoo cult. <laughs> In the early, in, in the mid 1930s, because of our, I guess you would say, strange teachings that seemed unbelievable at the time, and um, I'd say I these, did not know this. I, I, I am right. I am completely ignorant uh, <laughs> to to these things that you're talking about, and uh, fascinating, fascinating. So, indeed, when you when you uh, use the the word wheel. Uh, -huh. uh I take it that is your word for UFO? Yes, yes. Um uh, particularly the somewhat circular, spherical, orbital shaped craft which have perhaps become the most common type of UFO. I mean, technically a UFO can refer to anything that's unknown, any aerial object that's unknown. <laughs> Correct. So we try to uh, delineate and differentiate between any uh, so-called UFO, which could be a paper bag floating in the air for all we're concerned. We try to differentiate between those hoaxes and those other crafts that may be of some other uh, origin. could be military aircraft. There's a difference between um, what some may call UFOs and the wheel-like objects that have become most commonly associated with the UFO phenomena. And, and we normally use the term wheels um, 
And that term is actually rooted in the sacred scriptures. I think you're familiar with Ezekiel's wheels. Right. Uh, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used the term wheels uh, generally because most of these planes that he referred to are somewhat circular in nature. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so tell me this. So, uh, was, was the leader told, uh, what these wheels in the sky, and I'm starting to sound mm -hmm. like journey now, uh, <laughs> Uh, the wheels in the sky, uh, what their purpose was, who they were? Yes, yes, well, indeed. Well, that's I would like to hear. So please, tell us. To, to the surprise of many, these UFOs that have been sighted since um, the early 30s, especially in, since the 40s and mid-40s, these wheels are not of extraterrestrial origin. These wheels are not, these UFOs, these planes that fly at uh, phenomenal speeds with unfathomable maneuverability, these crafts are not of alien origin. They are, their origin is actually here on Earth by human beings. However, the people that guide and control these wheels are people whom the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as scientists. He also referred to them as the angels. They are people just like ordinary human beings, except for the fact that they exude extraordinary intelligence and power because these people have been trained under, under a totally different paradigm. In fact, they have been taught uh, at the behest, and they act at the behest of the supreme being himself. So they are people like us, but they are extraordinary. <laughs> well, now, would these people or, or entities or whatever you want to call them, um, are they uh, coming from some other dimension? Are they in the same dimension that we are as well? Uh, do they make themselves, I mean, could I walk down the street and pass one and not know it? It, it is very possible, you know, it, it is very possible. This is what, why there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about be careful uh, who you're entertaining, because you could be entertaining angels unaware. <laughs> so these are people, they look and perhaps even dress like us, but they are of a totally different paradigm. They are they're born here on Earth. However, because of their ability to uh, pilot and control and guide these wheel-like crafts, they are not limited to the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, uh, we're taught that these planes can go pretty much wherever they want to in space, you see. But their origins are actually earthly. You know, I... Uh I just uh, did an episode with um, L.A. Marzulli. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of him or not. Uh, but he has a unique, um, it's kind of a scientific slash ancient biblical text viewpoint um, on the UFOs. And, and I'm hearing things that, that sound similar. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So, but uh, the reason these all these things all belong to the nation of Islam is because they are under control of your leader or of God. Uh, I'm a little confused well, there. Okay, I'll, I'll be happy to try to uh, clarify some of that. Um, Let's say that these wheels are affiliated with the Nation of Islam. They are affiliated with people of righteousness, period. Okay. And it's not like these, um, these planes uh, are relegated to the daily affairs of the Nation of Islam. Uh, after all, we're taught that uh, these crafts and the God, the Supreme Being responsible for them, have uh, duties that extend far beyond Earth, you know, in Islam period, God is referred to as, in Arabic, Rabbil Alameen, 
which means the Lord of all the worlds. So he has obligations to maintain his creation from from all around, from all the planets and uh, universes, if you will. Mm -hmm. So these planes are just a mode of transportation, but they do have other capabilities that I don't know if we have as much time to talk about those capabilities in this show, but um, that just happens to be one of them. Well, I'm sure you've heard uh, the reports of UFO sightings uh, shutting down uh, nuclear missile silos, yes, uh, yes, the equipment, yes. you know, that uh, manages those uh, warheads. Uh, oh, yeah. So are, are you saying that, that those UFOs that, that shut down those nuclear bases, if indeed it's true, um, mm -hmm. would be associated with the Nation of Islam? Well, absolutely. And the reason being is because these, before uh, any reports came about uh, these uh, UFOs interfering with uh, nuclear arms and destabilizing uh, weapons testing sites and things like that, before any of those um, former military officials came forth to report these things, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had already delineated uh, these wheels' purposes and some of the things that they would do, and that's just one of them. <laughs> that's just one of the many things that they would do. Uh, in my book, I do share words from both uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, who have surprisingly, Rick, these men have blatantly and boldly proclaimed their association with these crafts. But it is ironic that as much criticism that's heralded, that's thrown at the Nation of Islam, very seldom do we hear any of the Nation of Islam's critics, detractors, or skeptics even bring up this part of our teaching. Well, and, I, like, like, like I said, uh, 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 you know, I, I grew up as as a a white redhead kid in Southern <laughs> California. Uh, whenever I saw uh, uh, Mr. Farrakhan on on the news, it was all always because you know he was uh, you know. Shrouded involved in, in a riot or was inciting a riot or I, I don't know. It always seemed to be something negative. That that's all right. right. You know, and right. that's that's the the media. Now I can <laughs> safely say that I have never heard uh the term UFO um used in conjunction with with Mr. Farrakhan or right. or or anything with the nation of Islam. Now, mm -hmm. this might be just due to my overall ignorance of the subject. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there are ufologists uh, out there possibly watching this right now uh, that know all about it. Um, <laughs> now, so, you know, understandably, I mean, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, mm -hmm. the media, uh, doesn't talk about UFOs uh, seriously, uh, you know, about with anyone. Right. 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 So, so that part uh, doesn't co uh, concern me as much as mm -hmm. um, why there isn't more spoken about this in just general uh, right. UFO circles. Right. 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 Um, now, what what has been your uh, experience? I mean, I'm sure you've you've had conversations with people who mm -hmm. are not part of the Nation of Islam uh, in right. regards to this UFO subject. What mm -hmm. type of reaction do do those people usually give you? I, I'm just curious. <laughs> um, and again, that would depend on the circle. Um, if you look at it from a religious perspective. Uh, unfortunately, and this is no um, blast against religion in general, but um, religious folks tend to look at things from a shrouded point of view, if I may say. Yes. 
And um, <laughs> I, I completely so, understand and agree. So. And uh, generally speaking, religious folks, you know, tend to be kind of closed minded sometimes. Yep. So any thought outside of their traditional outlook, their traditional perspective, many of them will close doors. However, I've noticed that the more um, academically advanced, even the more scientific a person thinks or becomes, they tend to be a little more open uh, to this subject, and they seem to be rather intrigued like you. <laughs> yeah. And what's surprising to me is that even among ufological circles, uh, this is still surprising to people, which leads me to believe that there has been a deliberate, deliberate intention to... Um, to um, steer the people away from this part of the Nation of Islam's teaching, because it would give very val- it would validate the Nation of Islam in the eyes of pretty much everybody. Um, I'd like to share a brief history, if I may. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And you may be familiar with the Battle of Los Angeles. Yep. Um, that took place on February twenty fifth, nineteen forty two. Mm-hmm. Well. Up before that time, there was no person of significance in America talking about um, what people now call UFOs, except the Nation of Islam. Uh, The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, along with many Muslims, were arrested in 1934 uh, in Detroit. And because of this strange teaching of ours, we were labeled a voodoo cult. Um, However, many years later, when the U.S. military encountered what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had been preaching about over Los Angeles during the uh, Battle of Los Angeles, and everything that they encountered, that huge wheel-like plane, along with other smaller wheel-like planes moving at uh, dazzling speed, so to speak, after that fiasco over Los Angeles, Their investigations, the government investigations, led to Elijah Muhammad, which led to the arrest of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about two and a half months after the Battle of Los Angeles. And this was done by an executive decision. This was done by the FBI. The FBI arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and they questioned him about this will, and they admitted to him that they saw it. So much so that they confiscated uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's uh, drawings and illustrations concerning the so-called UFOs. Uh, And this is, again, this is the part of the Battle of Los Angeles that's not discussed even in ufological circles. That Battle of Los Angeles led to the unwarranted arrest of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They had no grounds for arresting him whatsoever. There was not even a court date. There was not even a court case. They just arrested him. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, I have never heard that. Um, so right. uh, that that is that is mind blowing uh, mm-hmm. to to say the least. So yeah. uh, so uh, so they arrest him. They question him. Uh-huh. Uh, what did they find out? Did he say yes? This is part of my nation or whatever? He he said yes. Um, They admitted to him that they saw it, and um, he assured them that they could never get to her, (laughs) to this wheel. (laughs) You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is is a very bold leader, uh, small in stature, but he didn't back down to anybody, just like the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. You know, they speak truth regardless of circumstance. So even though Mr. Muhammad was in the clutches of the most powerful government in the world who were interrogating him about uh, this huge wheel-like plane along with the smaller wheel-like planes, which we sometimes call baby planes. Um, They admitted to him that they saw it. They confiscated his illustration. They even confiscated a blackboard that was at the mosque uh, that had drawings of this wheel on it. Uh, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, assured them with boldness that they could never get to her. Wow. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Uh, 
because you are part mm -hmm. of this nation of Islam, yes. do you have any type of special, uh, I don't know what word I should use, telepathic mm -hmm. uh, ability, communication ability with these uh, <laughs> wheels slash UFOs? <laughs> It's funny you should ask that. Um, I, I don't claim to have any special abilities or anything of that nature. However, um, what we are taught is that the human being has a potential far beyond what we are currently enacting. Mm -hmm. um, the human being is has the capability of literally becoming a god. And... The, those who pilot these wheels, based on the technological capabilities of these wheel-like planes or these UFOs, that in and of itself is proof that we as human beings can reach uh, higher heights. Mm -hmm. Is that like to say a, a higher level of consciousness, that, that type of thing, or is it different? A, a, higher, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of capabilities. You know, the mere fact that these uh, planes were built by, constructed by, piloted, and controlled by human beings uh, pretty much indicates that we, too, have these uh, capabilities. Of course, we would never be able to uh, manifest these capabilities under what we describe as satanic rule, uh, we believe this is a world governed by satanic forces um, that withholds uh, vital information and knowledge from the people. So it takes the right type of knowledge. It takes the right type of education and the right type of paradigm and lifestyle before the human being can manifest these type of qualities that we see exhibited by those on those planes. Have you ever seen one yourself? I have seen the smaller wheels, you know, uh, as, in terms of the great big one, which we refer to as the mother wheel or the mother plane. Uh, you hear some people call it the mother ship. Mm -hmm. um, I have not seen one of seen that in person. However, you know, YouTube, uh, <laughs> the photographs of these planes all over. But in, in person, I have. Uh, even before I became really involved in the nation of Islam, you know, I recall seeing uh, one of these things. So that's part of my, this adamant spirit that I have on this subject. You know, I know that it is just that important. Now, you know, people report seeing um, orbs. They report seeing mm -hmm. saucer-like uh, right. uh, objects. They report um, seen uh, triangular shaped uh, mm -hmm. objects. Are you saying mm -hmm. that all of those things are I, connected to the nation of Islam? I, I can't say that all of those are. Um, if they're not, fact, if I, they're not military, uh, you know, if, if they're truly quote unquote a UFO. Mm -hmm. um, I guess would be the way I would ask that question. I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, are there other types of entities um, also flying around in these objects? Not well, just the people you described. Um, well, like I said, the origin of these crafts are earthly by people on earth. However, these crafts, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated, are capable of going anywhere in space that they want to. So he also told us about life on other planets. Um, he, whether that life is microbial, small life, or humanoid type life, uh, he did say that there was life on, uh, on other planets. And I don't know, you know, it's not like I get the memo on what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I don't know if, you know, if some of the life forms from these other planets accompany, you know, those on these ships. But I will say this. He did say that while there is life on other planets and some of that life does include humanoid type life, 
he did say that Earth, as far as this universe is concerned, Earth is the most advanced. We as humans are the most uh, intelligent of the life forms. He hmm. did say that. Which is just about the opposite of of what you normally hear. Uh, right. at, at least the people that, uh, you know, are thinking outside the box, you know. We're thinking mm -hmm. that these these other universes could be you know millions ahead millions of years ahead of us, um, right? But what you're saying is uh, just the opposite, right? Uh, well, it, listen. It, it becomes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. It, be, it becomes almost unbelievable to accept the fact that planes of this type of maneuverability with these type of capabilities that they've demonstrated, the speeds that they fly at, the uh, angles that they stop and move at, just, just the overall technology, the telepathic, uh, telekinetic type of uh, capabilities that these planes and those from those planes exhibit, it becomes almost unbelievable to believe that human beings are responsible for that. But as I stated earlier, Elijah Muhammad was given all the details before there was any questions about these so-called planes. He was given the intricate details concerning uh, those who pilot them, uh, many of whom were uh, taught to do what they do since the tender age of six years old. So there's so, so much uh, that he shared, and I'm certain there's a whole lot more that he didn't share that, knew, that he knew. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I got a question here. If if the entities flying these objects are truly human, mm -hmm. um, how are they getting around things as simple as as the G forces that would be uh, put against these these people? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, traveling at thousands of miles an hour and making a right hand turn, uh, these mm -hmm. people would would turn into jelly. So mm -hmm. they, they've got to be some type of superhuman if they are human, right? Right. Okay. And, and, they are, and they are superhuman in, in terms of their intelligence and capabilities. However, there's a realistic part to this. These planes, as we're taught, are made from a certain type of steel that is literally unknown to conventional intelligence of this world. It's a certain type of steel that is so tough uh, that it can literally, is almost impenetrable, um, as the Battle of Los Angeles, Angeles uh, showed. You know, at that time, the uh, U.S. Army fired some of its heaviest artillery at the time, anyway, at this plane, and of course it didn't budge. So that indicated and demonstrated just some of the capabilities uh, and toughness of these planes. Not to mention the fact that there are spacesuits, if you will, if you call. There are certain uniforms involved, and because of the type of uniforms that is used, this is what those who have been abducted and encountered the beings from these craft have, in some cases, mistakenly uh, referred to as grays and things like that. You know, is a certain type of spacesuit that allows them to maneuver at those heights and uh, through that type of force and these different atmospheres. Um, throughout this universe. Mm. Now, of course, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know all the intricate details uh, in that sense, but the mere fact that we see these planes and they have been recorded and witnessed and reported flying at uh, what seems to be inhumanly speed, <laughs> the mere fact that we uh, have seen these things is proof enough that it can be done. So you don't think there's any possibility that sometime many many moons ago uh, you know somebody from the nation of islam or the original leader of the nation of islam saw a ufo and said wow that is absolutely amazing i am going to take that as part of my religion <laughs> well um if it would be easy to speculate on things like that but what pretty much debunks that notion is the fact that before there were ever any concerns, before there were any investigations and mass sightings and 
uh, lots of photographs and video footage of these things um, before even any major abduction cases. Not only did the Ambulaj Muhammad talk about these things, but remember, he gave vivid details about what they can do. And so all of the sightings, the uh, abduction and encounters and reports and things like that, they all add up to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had already said. So the uh, concept of him just or anyone just seeing one and saying, oh, you know, I think I can uh, make a religion out of this, it pretty much debunks that notion, especially uh, from the fact that his teacher, who we refer to as God in person or the supreme being, he literally summoned this plane for Elijah Muhammad to see. It's not like he just saw it and like, whoa, he literally summoned it, you see? <clears throat> okay, okay. Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing stuff, uh, Rashad, I must say. It is. <laughs> um, again, the name of the book is UFOs and the Nation of Islam, the Source, Proof, and Reality of the Wheels. Uh, where can people get the book? Um uh, as of right now, uh, perhaps the best way would be to go on our website, which is nationbrothers.com. Okay. Um, and if you want to get directly to purchase the book, you can go to nationbrothers.com slash store. Okay. All right. And I also understand you are on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, Facebook. Uh, you can get uh, reach me by my whole name, which is Ilya Rashad Mohammed. That's I L I A, middle name Rashad, last name Mohammed, and uh, my Twitter handle is again Ilya Rashad, uh, I L I A R A S H A D. All one word. <clears throat> That's correct. That's correct. All right. Very good. Well, listen, uh, Rashad. It's been a fascinating discussion. Um, I, I've learned a, a great deal um, uh, regarding uh, your thoughts, your theories, and your beliefs. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and, and talking to us about it. Thank you, Rick. I really, 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 from the bottom of my heart, thank you uh, just for having me, for asking questions that I'm certain you and your listeners would love to know. And, hey, um, I pray that everything works out with you and your show and your listeners. And I'm really excited. I really appreciate you. I really mean that. Well, I appreciate uh, you saying that, Rashad. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely stay in touch. And uh, good luck on the book. And uh, who knows, maybe there'll, there'll be a, a sequel out or something. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And good luck to you and your show. All right. Uh, Rashad, thanks again, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. You bet. All right. Good night. Open the door, you'll find the secret. To find the answer is to keep it. the word wheel, uh -huh. uh, I take it that is your word for UFO? Yes, yes. Uh, particularly the somewhat circular, spherical, orbital-shaped craft, which have perhaps become the most common type of UFO. I mean, technically a UFO can refer to anything that's unknown, any aerial object that's unknown. <laughs> Correct. So we try to uh, delineate and differentiate between any uh, so-called UFO, which could be a paper bag floating in the air for all we're concerned. We try to differentiate between those hoaxes and those other crafts that may be of some other uh, origin. Could be military aircraft. There's a difference between um, what some may call UFOs and the wheel-like objects 
that have become most commonly associated with the UFO phenomena. And, and we normally use the term wheels, um, and that term is actually rooted in the sacred scriptures. I think you're familiar with Ezekiel's wheels. Right. Uh, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used the term wheels uh, generally because most of these planes that he referred to are somewhat circular in nature. I see. I see. So, so tell me this. So, uh, was, was the leader told, uh, what these wheels in the sky, and I'm starting to sound like journey now, uh, <laughs> Uh, the wheels in the sky, uh, what their purpose was, who they were? Yes, yes, well, indeed. Well, that's I would like to hear. So please, tell us. To, to the surprise of many, these UFOs that have been sighted since um, the early 30s, especially in, since the 40s and mid-40s, these wheels are not of extraterrestrial origin. These wheels are not, these UFOs, these planes that fly at uh, phenomenal speeds with unfathomable maneuverability, these crafts are not of alien origin. They are, their origin is actually here on Earth by human beings. However, the people that guide and control these wheels are people whom the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as scientists. He also referred to them as the angels. They are people just like ordinary human beings, except for the fact that they exude extraordinary. Um, right. But what you're saying is uh, just the opposite. <laughs> right. I, well, it, listen, it, it becomes, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. It be, it becomes almost unbelievable to accept the fact that planes of this type of maneuverability with these type of capabilities that they've demonstrated, the speeds that they fly at, the uh, angles that they stop and move at, just, just the overall technology, the telepathic, uh, telekinetic type of uh, capabilities that these planes and those from those planes exhibit, it becomes almost unbelievable to believe that human beings are responsible for that. But as I stated earlier, Elijah Muhammad was given all the details before there was any questions about these so-called planes. He was given the intricate details concerning uh, those who pilot them, uh, many of whom were uh, taught to do what they do since the tender age of six years old. So there's so, so much uh, that he shared, and I'm certain there's a whole lot more that he didn't share that knew that he knew. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I got a question here. If, well, if, if the entities flying these objects are truly human, mm -hmm. um, how are they getting around things as simple as as the g-forces that would be uh, put against these these people uh, uh -huh. you know traveling at thousands of miles an hour and making a right hand turn uh, these uh -huh. people would would turn into jelly so uh -huh. they they've got to be some type of superhuman if they are human right right Okay. And, and they are and they are superhuman in, in terms of their intelligence and capabilities. However, there's a realistic part to this. These planes, as we're taught, are made from a certain type of steel that is literally unknown to conventional intelligence of this world. It's a certain type of steel that is so tough uh, that it can literally is almost impenetrable. Um, as the Battle of Los Angeles, Angeles uh, showed, you know, at that time, the uh, U.S. Army fired some of its heaviest artillery at the time anyway at this plane, and of course it didn't budge. So that indicated and demonstrated just some of the capabilities uh, and toughness of these planes, not to mention the fact that there are spacesuits, if you will, if you call. There are certain uniforms involved, 
And because of the type of uniforms that is used, this is what those who have been abducted, UFOs, these planes that fly at uh, phenomenal speeds with unfathomable maneuverability, these crafts are not of alien origin. They are, their origin is actually here on Earth by human beings. However, the people that guide and control these wheels are people whom the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as scientists. He also referred to them as the angels. They are people just like ordinary human beings, except for the fact that they exude extraordinary intelligence and power because these people have been trained under, under a totally different paradigm. In fact, they have been taught uh, at the behest, and they act at the behest of the supreme being himself. So they are people like us, but they are extraordinary. <laughs> well, now, would these people or, or entities or whatever you want to call them, um, are they... Uh, coming from some other dimension? Are they in the same dimension that we are as well? Uh, do they make themselves... I mean, could I walk down the street and pass one and not know it? It, it is very possible. You know, it, it is very possible. This is what why there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about be careful uh, who you're entertaining because you could be entertaining angels unaware. <laughs> So these are people, they look and perhaps even dress like us, but they are of a totally different paradigm. They are they're born here on Earth. However, because of their ability to uh, pilot and control and guide these wheel-like crafts, they are not limited to the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, uh, we're taught that these planes can go pretty much wherever they want to in space, you see. But their origins are actually earthly. You know, I uh, just uh, did an episode with um, L.A. Marzuli. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of him or not. Uh, but he has a unique, um, it's kind of a scientific slash ancient biblical text viewpoint mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on the UFOs. And, and I'm okay. hearing things that that sound similar. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, but the reason these all these things all belong to the nation of Islam is because they are under control some type of extraterrestrial. <laughs> I'm so glad that you asked that, Rick. What was given to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and be mindful that this, as you stated earlier, is before any mass sightings, before any uh, major UFO investigation. This is even before the term UFO became a part of uh, the language, a part of the vernacular. Right. Um, of course, this is before the Kenneth Arnold uh, sighting. But the Nation of Islam had already been proclaiming these things, um, which literally caused the authorities in the United States to label the nation of Islam a voodoo cult <laughs> in the early, in, in the mid 1930s, because of our, I guess you would say, strange teachings that seemed unbelievable at the time. And um, I'd say I these, did not know this. I, I, I am I right? am completely ignorant. Uh, <laughs> To, to these things that you're talking about, and uh, fascinating, fascinating. So Indeed. when you, when you uh, use the, the word wheel, uh -huh. uh, I take it that is your word for UFO? Yes, yes. Uh, particularly the somewhat circular, spherical, orbital-shaped craft which have perhaps become the most common type of UFO. I mean, technically a UFO can refer to anything that's unknown, any aerial object that's unknown. Correct. <laughs> so we try to uh, delineate and differentiate between any 
so-called UFO, which could be a paper bag floating in the air for all we're concerned. We try to differentiate between those hoaxes and those other crafts that may be of some other uh, origin. Could be military aircraft. There's a difference between um, what some may call UFOs and the wheel-like objects that have become most commonly associated with the UFO phenomena. And, and we normally use the term wheels, um, and that term is actually rooted in the sacred scriptures. I think you're familiar with Ezekiel's wheels. Right. Uh, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used the term wheels uh, generally because most of these planes that he referred to are somewhat circular in nature. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So so tell me this. So uh, was, was the leader told... Uh, what these wheels in the sky, and I'm starting to sound mm -hmm. like Journey now. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you something. Uh, because you are part mm -hmm. of this nation of Islam, yeah. do you have any type of special... Uh, I don't know what word I should use, telepathic uh, ability, communication ability with these uh, wheels slash UFOs? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that. Um, I, I don't claim to have any special abilities or anything of that nature. However, um, what we are taught is that the human being has a potential far beyond what we are currently enacting. Mm -hmm. um, the human being is, has the capability of literally becoming a god. And the, those who pilot these wheels, based on the technological capabilities of these wheel-like planes or these UFOs, that in and of itself is proof that we as human beings can reach uh, higher heights. Is that like to say a, a higher level of consciousness, that, that type of thing, or is it different? A, a, higher, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of capabilities. You know, the mere fact that these uh, planes were built by, constructed by, piloted, and controlled by human beings uh, pretty much indicates that we too have these uh, capabilities. Of course, we would never be able to uh, manifest these capabilities under what we describe as satanic rule. Uh, we believe this is a world governed by satanic forces um, that withholds uh, vital information and knowledge from the people. So it takes the right type of knowledge, it takes the right type of education, and the right type of paradigm and lifestyle before the human being can manifest these type of qualities that we see exhibited by those on those planes. Uh, have you ever seen one yourself? I have seen the smaller wheels, you know, uh, as, in terms of the great big one, which we refer to as the mother wheel or the mother plane. Uh, you hear some people call it the mothership. Mm -hmm. um, I have not seen one of seen that in person. However, you know, YouTube, uh, <laughs> there's photographs of these planes all over. But in, in person, I have, uh, even before I became really involved in the Nation of Islam, you know, I recall seeing uh, one of these things. So like plane, along with other smaller wheel-like planes, moving at uh, dazzling speed, so to speak, after that fiasco over Los Angeles, their investigations, the government investigations, led to Elijah Muhammad, which led to the arrest of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about two and a half months after the Battle of Los Angeles. And this was done by an executive decision. This was done by the FBI. The FBI arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and they questioned him about this will, and they admitted to him that they saw it. So much so that they confiscated 
uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's uh, drawings and illustrations concerning the so-called UFOs. Uh, and this is, again, this is the part of the Battle of Los Angeles that's not discussed even in ufological circles. That Battle of Los Angeles led to the unwarranted arrest of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They had no grounds for arresting him whatsoever. There was not even a court date. There was not even a court case. They just arrested him. Uh, I got to tell you, I have never heard that. Um, so right. uh, that that is that is mind blowing, uh, mm -hmm. to to say the least. So, yeah. uh, so, uh, so they arrest him. They question him. Uh, uh, what did they find out? Did he say yes? This is part yes, of did. my nation, or whatever. Or? He, he said yes. Um, they admitted to him that they saw it, and um, he assured them that they can never get to her, <laughs> to this wheel. <laughs> you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is, is a very bold leader, uh, small in stature, but he didn't back down to anybody, just like the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. You know, they speak truth regardless of circumstance. So even though Mr. Muhammad was in the clutches of the most powerful government in the world, who were interrogating him about uh, this huge wheel-like plane, along with the smaller wheel-like planes, which we sometimes call baby planes. Um, they admitted to him that they saw it. They confiscated his illustration. They even confiscated a blackboard that was at the mosque uh, that had drawings of this wheel on it. Uh, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, assured them with boldness that they could never get to her. Wow. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, because you are part of this nation of Islam and said, wow, that is absolutely amazing. I am going to take that as part of my religion. <laughs> well, um, if it would be easy to speculate on things like that, but what pretty much debunks that notion is the fact that before there were ever any concerns, before there were any investigations and mass sightings and uh, lots of photographs and video footage of these things, um, before even any major abduction cases, not only did the Ambulaj Muhammad talk about these things, but remember, he gave vivid details about what they can do. And so all of the sighting, the uh, abduction and encounters and reports and things like that, they all add up to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had already said. So the uh, concept of him just or anyone just seeing one and saying, oh, you know, I think I can uh, make a religion out of this, it pretty much debunks that notion, especially uh, from the fact that his teacher – who we refer to as God in person or the Supreme Being, he literally summoned this plane for Elijah Muhammad to see. It's not like he just saw it and like, whoa, he literally summoned it. You see? <clears throat> okay, okay. Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing stuff, uh, Rashad, I must say. It is. <laughs> Um, again, the name of the book is UFOs and the Nation of Islam, the Source, Proof, and Reality of the Wheels. Uh, where can people get the book? Uh, as of right now, uh, perhaps the best way would be to go on our website, which is nationbrothers.com. Okay. Um, and if you want to get directly to purchase the book, you can go to nationbrothers.com slash store. Okay. All right. And I also understand you are on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, Facebook, uh, you can get reach me by my whole name, which is Ilya Rashad Mohammed. That's I-L-I-A, middle name Rashad, last name Mohammed. And uh, my Twitter handle is, again, Ilya Rashad, uh, I-L-I-A-R-A-S-H-A-D. All one word? <clears throat> That's correct. That's correct. All right. Very good. 
Well, listen, uh, Rashad, it's been a fascinating discussion. Um, I, I've learned a, a great deal um, uh, regarding uh, your thoughts, your theories, and your beliefs. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used the term wheels uh, generally because most of these planes that he referred to are somewhat circular in nature. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so tell me this. So, uh, was, was the leader told, uh, what these wheels in the sky, and I'm starting to sound mm -hmm. like journey now, uh, <laughs> Uh, the wheels in the sky, uh, what their purpose was, who they were? Yes, yes, well, indeed. Well, that's I would like to hear. So please, tell us. To, to the surprise of many, these UFOs that have been sighted since um, the early 30s, especially in, since the 40s and mid-40s, these wheels are not of extraterrestrial origin. These wheels are not, these UFOs, these planes that fly at uh, phenomenal speeds with unfathomable maneuverability, these crafts are not of alien origin. They are, their origin is actually here on Earth by human beings. However, the people that guide and control these wheels are people whom the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as scientists. He also referred to them as the angels. They are people just like ordinary human beings, except for the fact that they exude extraordinary intelligence and power because these people have been trained under, under a totally different paradigm. In fact, they have been taught uh, at the behest, and they act at the behest of the supreme being himself. So they are people like us, but they are extraordinary. <laughs> well, now, would these people or, or entities or whatever you want to call them, um, are they uh, coming from some other dimension? Are they in the same dimension that we are as well? Uh, do they make themselves, I mean, could I walk down the street and pass one and not know it? It, it is very possible, you know, it, it is very possible. This is what, why there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about be careful uh, who you're entertaining, because you could be entertaining angels unaware. <laughs> so these are people, they look and perhaps even dress like us, but they are of a totally different paradigm. They are they're born here on Earth. However, because of their ability to uh, pilot, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had already said, so the uh, concept of him just or anyone just seeing one and saying, oh, you know, I think I can uh, make a religion out of this, it pretty much debunks that notion, especially uh, from the fact that his teacher, who we refer to as God in person or the Supreme Being, he literally summoned this plane for Elijah Muhammad to see. It's not like he just saw it and like, whoa, he literally summoned it. You see? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing stuff, uh, Rashad, I must say. It is. <laughs> um, again, the name of the book is UFOs and the Nation of Islam, the Source, Proof, and reality of the wheels. Uh, where can people get the book? Uh, as of right now, uh, perhaps the best way would be to go on our website, which is nationbrothers.com. Okay. Um, and if you want to get directly to purchase the book, you can go to nationbrothers.com slash store. Okay. All right. And I also understand you are on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, Facebook, uh, you can get uh, reach me by my whole name, which is Ilya Rashad Mohammed. That's I-L-I-A, middle name Rashad, last name Mohammed. And uh, my Twitter handle is, again, Ilya Rashad. 
uh, I L I A R A S H A D. All one word. <clears throat> That's correct. That's correct. All right. Very good. Well, listen, uh, Rashad, it's been a fascinating discussion. Um, I, I've learned a, a great deal um, uh, regarding uh, your thoughts, your theories, and your beliefs. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and, and talking to us about it. Thank you, Rick. I really, 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 from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Uh, just for having me, for asking questions that I'm certain you and your listeners would love to know. And, hey, um, I pray that everything works out with you and your show and your listeners. And I'm really excited. I really appreciate you. I really mean that. Well, I appreciate uh, you saying that, Rashad. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely stay in touch. And uh, good luck on the book. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll... There'll be a, a sequel out or something. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And good luck to you and your show. All right. Uh, Rashad, thanks again, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. You bet. All right. Good night.